So we're going to be moving on to Google Frog and Magman. This is going to be first off once again on Blue Ben because that is the first map for every semifinals game. So right now we have Failthos is up in the finals and or and the Sponge is in the bronze match. So at this point we're kind of talking earlier about this and yeah, Google Frog and Magman. As the LO values kind of show, Magman's going to have an uphill struggle to get through this. And I was actually thinking earlier on that Google Frog failed us final seemed likely. But we'll see. Magman might find something. We'll see, though. Google Frog going for the Cloaky Blood Factory. Ooh. Cloaky with Magman going for Hover. We'll I think he was listening to, to our commentary and, and wants, um, to wants, wants to prove to, it. Wants to show off, yeah. Wants I to prove that Cloaky Magman. can work. And. I did say I think Floki can work if it wins in the first five minutes or at least sets up the other player to be heavily on the defensive and unable to expand within the first five minutes or possibly even two or three minutes. Yeah, I think Google Frog is also, it, this will make for a slightly more interesting game, um, especially yeah. if Magman is playing, is, has been watching, observing Failthas' style. I really am looking forward to seeing Google Frog, uh, a final of Google Frog versus Failthas, where uh, it'll be interesting to see whether Failthas sticks to style. Because often when you're faced with a um, higher player, if you have a predict predictable style, you need to break it, otherwise they'll just beat you. Yeah. But I'll also be interested up. to see if he, if he does stick to his style, um, how well Google Frog does, because it's clearly it's actually, a practice style. So if is, he sticks to what he knows, it'll be interesting to see what Google Frog, Frog does to beat it, if he can. Well, that's the thing, is there's a risk. I mean, on the one hand, it's a practice style, it's what you know. So you have, like, your opponent knows what you do. So if you switch up, it makes it harder for them to read you out. It makes it harder for them to know what to do to predict it. But at the same time, I mean, Zero K offers a lot of tools to actually read what your opponent's doing, to see what your opponent's doing, so you don't have to predict quite so much. And having a practice style, that just gets rid of the execution problem. You don't have to think about what you're doing. You just do it, and then work from there. So you don't have to worry about, you don't have to fret about the early game trying to figure out what to do, and your opponent doesn't have that advantage on you. Because the thing is, when you're playing against a stronger opponent, it's intimidating, and it's kind of tempting to try to go for all-ins, to try to win in the early game before your opponent, who probably has better ma macro than you, is going to win out. Because like a better player, especially in 0k, where macro becomes fairly important, especially in larger games, that ends up winning. I mean, we saw last game, Feldhaus ended up winning pretty much because they just got metal and ended up slowly but surely. A lot of their games, their defensive style is based on that. And if they don't think mm. they can out-macro Google Frog, that's you see Magman coming in with a, uh, he's coming in with a lot of daggers right now. And this is what I mean. They're running in. into a hill, they're running into a laser tower, they're running into the commander. And this is exactly um, what I mean by lower skill players often will go for an all-in against a higher skill player mm -hmm. try to win early in the game. And Magman's actually not doing a bad job either. Not a lot of static defenses in play, but there's enough. And Google Frog and micro, micro around these daggers. Daggers aren't going to even kill one metal extractor before they go down. So this it's raiders. one of the problems that, that um, a lot of uh, players make is that they build a lot of raiders early, then they suicide themselves on a metal extractor, thinking, oh, i got a metal extractor, it's all right. But if you suicide no. on a metal extractor, it's not necessarily a good thing. Especially we with see, daggers. Uh, yeah, because like you need that critical mass. Glaive, one up. glaive can kill a metal extractor and get away with dying. We see glaives in the north. That. And um, actually, oh. Sniping laser tower. Sniping everything. I think this is going to win the game. I think Google Frost is going to take it with these glaives. I think that um, the laser tower will kill them. Yeah. Oh, is the it? Oh, one. just barely. Yeah, just, those two. If those just. two glaives had focused on the laser tower, that would have been game. Or not quite. That was closer the mace than, was I, than I thought. Um, yeah, the mace would have. <laughs> Google Frog's good enough that he could just run around, around, around the factory forever. But um, yeah, it wouldn't necessarily um, mean game right there. That was a large enough attack there with the glaives that he could expect to do some serious damage when he went in. Mm -hmm. But. Um, uh, yeah, it was. It's still a little bit similar. So it's still a little bit suicidal, but um, that, that you're right that that did almost do enough damage to um, uh, our right win. And he's, yeah. he's still coming over the hills. He's using well, the that, small, small uh, areas he can get over the hills too. Well, that's uh, what I meant too. Is that if the lotus went down, that makes would have been a problem. But like you said, going around the factory would have been a solution. And also, just <laughs> follow up glaives would have finished off the factory. Now that lotus is mm -hmm. still being a bit of a pain. And there's there's a worker there. There will be a caretaker pretty soon. And that Lotus will be nice and repaired. Although an attack from the north should take it out. You and can see what Google Frog's doing right now, though, is he's expanding quite heavily. He has two constructors expanding either side of his base on the extremities, and they're probably going to move there to, to, to move in. Um, and this is exactly what Magman could have done with the uh, uh, the raiders that he had yeah. earlier that he suicided in the factory. During if the it, raid, if yeah. If he'd seen that, 
kept them alive, not s tried to snipe that defender up the hill because going up that little, that sort of messy hill in the middle of the, uh, middle of the um, uh, base is actually kind of difficult for Hovercraft. They slow down it's a lot of hills. Tell, though. I think that was a matter of map unfamiliarity because this map isn't played very much and the area looks like it's hover pathable. It's just bumpier than it looks. The texture doesn't quite communicate just how difficult it is for vehicles to get up there. Because there's yeah, unpathable um, areas on that particular, hill. Hovercraft on any sort of slope, slow down a ton. You see um, uh, Magman is going switching back in, into daggers. He's cleaned up uh, a glaive attack and um, he's doing quite a good job of that. And he's now getting sort of more towards the critical mass with the mace in the middle of the map, which will really help with the glaives to sort of have sort of the hammer and the anvil. that You can yeah. run around, you can sort of push in with the, the mace and then run around and around with the um, uh, daggers. Not only that, it does also just, it puts a bit of pressure, keeps Google Frog honest. I mean, Google Frog can't just rush in with the maces, sorry, rush in with the glaives because the mace is right there. Although, admittedly, the mace has moved a bit too far forward. Actually, that mace is going to its death, overextending itself, and those glaives, a couple of them are going to go down, but the rest of them are going to take out that mace. Actually, four of them go down, but five of them go down first, but that mace still goes down in Google Frog's territory, as with all the glaives. That's a lot of metal donated, and Magman pretty much just killed one defender for that. He did kill a lot of... Uh Glaives. It was kind of, That's I mean, worth initiative. it. Initiative, but you yes. can do a lot more with, you, it's worth it on metal value, but what you can do with an early mace is a lot more than what he did actually do. He sort of engaged and Google Fog engaged onto him at the same time that he was attacking the, um, uh, the tower, so. Well, that the thing is, it, that it was wasn't as strong as it could be. This is what the point Magman is built, is has a big um, dagger ball up the south, though, mm -hmm. uh, up the. Uh, up the side, it's coming around, and it could do a lot of damage. It could, but I mean, the thing yeah. is, that, that was necessary, because the, I was about to say, the mace is, losing that mace means that Google Frog basically has the room to move in with the glaives, except uh, that they lost the initiative by it. losing the glaives. That was a really risky trade by Magman. I think the daggers here, just to keep enough pressure on that, Magman doesn't get counterattacked. He's going wrong with the daggers. He's, he's going in for the base. He needs to clean out the sides of the expansions. He needs to take out the rear. Yeah, he's going in for the He's commander. going for a comp snipe, and that, what the... It's, no. Well, that's not going to last. And then with the air switch coming in from Google Frog, that's pretty much going to secure it. And once again, the daggers go for a suicide attack. And it's kind of unfortunate because the thing is, Magman is. Like I said, they were doing a pretty good job preventing the counterattack, especially if they'd gone over to the southwest. That would have caused the glaives to move way out of position. Keeping Magman well in the clear would have bought Magman a lot of time. Mm. As it stands, though, Magman basically has no time whatsoever, but to lose their commander on top of that. There's Magman did an excellent job getting those daggers in. They came in just right the angle, they're just at the right angle, they avoided everything, but they should have then split up and cleared out the sides. They should not have dove into the base, especially seeing the commander and then diving for the commander was a very bad idea. Yeah. Because a, a comm snipe, even if he had won at that point, a comm snipe would not have mattered Not enough. at this stage. 31 metal, that's what's going to drop down to 28. That's still ahead. That's still an advantage for Google Frog. Like, but, comm snipe only matters for the first three or four minutes of the game. And after that, and Magma about to lose their commander too, but after the first three or four minutes of the game, you're losing maybe, maybe a sixth of your economy at most. Yeah, it's it's quite good to make a comm snipe in this example, say, where he only lost one bomber to the commander's explosion, because he's not losing that much for, for it. But when you lose your entire raider force, you lose a, a force which is not just costs a lot of metal, and it's not just in the enemy base giving them a reclaim, but it's in a perfect situation to do a lot of damage. You've got an advantage here. You've got yeah. you know, your daggers in a position to clear out the expansion. There's a Google Frog's um, constructor right now is taking the three extra metal extractors, which would have could have continued to have been harassed. The mm -hmm. daggers are faster than the glaives. They can just continue to run around in and circles. Not, not just that, but also the fact that the daggers are there, as you were kind of hinting at, the bombers are going to move back. Like, they're going to force a bit of... They're going to put up a pressure. They're going to force the defending player to put up some defenders, put up maybe some, ra some razors if they're really underconfident. But raiders in the base, that means that their own raiders, the riots or whatever, they have to be moving around. They have to be chasing. That's putting units away from the front line. That's buying time for the other player, possibly even opening them up for a pincer. That makes it far more yeah. powerful, just for that sheer Go change in initiative. Google Frog is um, tripling the economy of, of, of Magman right now. Oh, He's yeah. expanded very heavily behind this. It's, it's mostly a naked Magman expansion, too. I think if Magman this knew this, Magman, Magman surrendered. Magman really needed to just sweep out with the daggers. They're so much faster than glaives. You can just keep sweeping and sweeping and sweeping and sweeping and just destroy any effort the enemy makes to expand yeah, do what uh, when you have did. faster constructors. <laughs> yeah, do what Felthas did, exactly. This is... um. This is why Valthus, I think, chooses the Hover fac Factory with his very defensive style, because they are such excellent Raider Raiders. They're excellent in enemy territory. 
uh, they're not quite as good actually uh, at defense often mm -hmm. um, as, as some of the other raiders. But they're really, really strong um, against enemy raiders in enemy territory when you're running away from them, when you're sweeping out expansion, yeah. when you're sniping and metal extractors with a high alpha, sniping instructor as well. That is huge. Although I gotta be honest, I would, I kind of hope that in the finals between, well, if Google Frog gets in the finals, but if we have a Google Frog fail house finals, that one of them picks Blue Bend at some point, because I want to see how they play against each other. I want to see Cloakie versus Hover, Google Frog versus Fail Thoughts, because right now, I mean, Magman has done a lot of good decisions, but also made a lot of decisions that I think are a bit too rote, like early game, trying to transpose early game decisions into the late game where they don't make sense. Like where yeah, it looks the comm like snipe, where they went for the base attack. That makes sense if you're going for a raid right at the start, but not later on. And I think that if we saw fail thoughts in Google Frog, then you'd have the, just that much better decision making that would make the game much more even and really show Cloakie and Hubbard how that interacts. Mm. If Google Frog, went yeah, to I, yeah, I'm looking forward to to seeing that. I think that um, I think that uh, Google Frog might make some more unconventional map choices. He might choose some bot maps in order to prevent fail thus. If he might just take him head on and see, can I beat this? But he might also pick some unconventional map choices to see if he can beat that fail thus. Yeah, possibly see. Hover's impossible. Might go for well, a map. Well, see where Hover's can't go, because Hover's can still go on the scene. Oh, yeah, that's true. But there are I'm maps quick, that... Um, I'm going to take a quick break and be back soon, okay? Okay. Right. So anyway, we're going to be going on to game two of Google Frog and Magman, which looks like it's going to be on Badlands as Magman's choice. I don't know how long it's going to take for that to start, but it should be up fairly soon. So yeah, Google Frog, as we see, it does definitely have much more confidence in their play. I think Magman, as they're saying, if Magman were to go for something a bit safer, I mean, the harassment makes sense. But it's also, I mean, matter of number harassers, how they go. Now, if Magman, I almost want to say if Magman were to go for a slightly more defensive style, they might be able to keep up. It's a little risky because, once again, you're kind of re relying on out your opponent. Now, Google Frog, on the other hand, Google Frog being one ahead. So Magman's probably going to either go for cheese or on this map, it's shield probably. Badlands is a popular shield and cloaky map. We'll see what's gone for, because Magman needs to not lose. That's the big thing here. If Google Frog takes it, but then Google Frog's in the finals. Magman, however, manages to win this, then we're on to game three. Google Frog gets map choices, which will probably be Comet Catcher, because, well, macro advantage. And we're starting up right away with... <sighs> starting right away with the... There we go, one. Google Frog going for Cloaky Bot Factory, and Magman going for Jump Bot Factory, and it looks like... Early pyro, right off the bat, Magman is going to be going for a very quick pyro attack. Probably going to go for, like I said, the all-in. Just rush in, deal the damage. I mean, the pyros are strong enough. They, if Google Frog spots it, though, and Google Frog almost certainly will spot it, a Lotus is going to be forthcoming. Right now, a Defender is what's coming up, and that won't stop a pyro. Lotus certainly will. And yeah, Magman's going to be waiting for that second pyro. That's going to be waiting way too long. The Glaive coming in here is going to be able to get that pyro spotted. In fact, the pyro right now, thanks to Magman's priority on the commander, that is not going to be built up before the glaive comes in and spots it out. So that pyro is going to do nothing. The defenders are being built just in case. An air starts being predicted, but a jump bot starts wasn't coming, and the pyro, this pyro needs to attack. No delay. This pyro needs to go forward and attack. There is no time. And in fact, I don't even know if there's time anymore because I think a lo lotus is pretty likely. Nothing else though, no unit no unit changes, but yeah, a Lotus is likely. The Pyro Hover not moving out, waiting for its companion. That's gonna be way too long. Google Frog actually not building a Lotus though. Surprisingly enough, Magman still left with an opening. Google Frog not going for a Lotus, not going for Zeus, not going for anything that would be your standard counter. There's nothing here that really is going by the book. I'm really quite surprised, but Magman. Magman does apparently have the advantage. As the as Aquin is pointing out, on paper, this is terrible for Google Frog. There's no Lotus. There's no I mean, the commander might go beam laser, and that would still do the trick. And light particle beam, also good. The Pyro coming around the south, and Google Frog nicely set up. Maces sorry, Glaives. Glaives keeping an eye on this. 
The Pyro, not going to go for that Glaive, shouldn't go for the Glaive at least, but the Glaive does spot what's going on, which means Google Frog basically knows when things are coming in, knows where the Pyro is going, knows what direction it's going, knows when it's coming in, and knows that it's chasing the... It looks like it's chasing the Glaive. Magman, yeah, not really harassing. That's chasing that Glaive. Trying to kill the Glaive. Magman, I'm thinking Magman is starting to get a bit of tunnel vision. I, I'm... That's the only pattern I can really notice in Magman's play. We saw in the last game that Magman was going heavily for focusing on the Raider. They focus on the commander. They, oh, hey, high value target. Kill it. Oh, hey, high value target of mechs. Kill it. Like, getting focused on apparently high value local targets and not really focusing on the broader picture. And a lot of times in 0k, that's a bad idea. It can be helpful, especially early game for, say, a comm snipe. We have even a few melee strategies here and there. And that, that tunnel vision on high value targets is probably due to the fact that Magman is slightly intimidated, I'm sure. I mean, Google Frog is a very strong player, and I think Magman is trying to basically eke out whatever advantages they can get without necessarily realizing how much of a disadvantage they may be placing themselves in at the same time. And this Pyro coming in here, two defenders, that's more than three. Oh, wow, that's more than enough. Pyro gets killed in midair. Second Pyro, however, is able to get in, but even then, two defenders, as we just saw, is more than enough to kill off a Pyro. And no, no, not quite. Ooh. Six health left. And that second defender needs to go down. There it goes, but that Pyro is going to go down to one Glaive shot. Tries to stop and actually doesn't quite manage. So unfortunately, the, both Pyros go down. And at this point, Google Frog has a massive advantage. So much for being bad on paper. This is going extremely well for Google Frog. They have the northwest corner. They have the center. Pyros are coming through the center. It's not going to do too much. And Zeus are being built. So Google Frog has that as a way of getting back in the game. Magman continuing to attempt this, and actually a tick goes off right next to the defender, so at least that helps Magman slightly. Magman, they are trying to go for the defender, and at this point, Google Frog very confident, pushing the defender, sorry, pushing the commander forward, and that's an econ comm too. That's the last commander that you push forward, and Google Frog is pushing that forward, but these pyros are still alive. Magman moving to heal the pyros, keeping them alive. That was a very good retreat there. Oh, hey, Sactoth, welcome back. Uh, yeah, hey. <laughs> so, yeah, here's what you missed. Although you probably figured it out right away. So Magman... Magman is being a bit tunnel visioned as last game. Going heavy pyro. Went for a couple raids off in the center. Well, one through the center and one through the south. Both of which were taken out. Though the south one did manage to take out a couple defenders. And Google Frog is, as you can see, tearing apart the map. The pyro is coming in here in the south. That... I mean, I've noticed Magman. I, I don't know if you weren't here to see it. But I have I think Magman, I figured out the problem. Magman... I think is intimidated and is trying to go very much for high value targets, getting tunnel vision whenever they spot a high value target and trying to kill it right away. The last game we noticed that, in this game I noticed even Magma was going for a glaive that was trying to spot out where the pyro was and not focusing on it. Now the Google Rocks commander is taking a lot of damage, but there's a lot of glaives, sorry, a lot of pyros. A lot of pyros this dying to try to kill that. focuses, but yeah, he just wasn't, yeah, he just, oh. If he just had a slightly better coordination and had his pyros in position. Because, I mean, he must have known the commander was there. I mean... Oh, he knew. He definitely or, knew. That was... Yeah, just a little slightly better coordination, jumping in on time, jumping in top on top of the commander to surround it. Um, that could have easily worked as a comm snipe, which, you know, would, would work to swing the game at least a little bit. Well, it would, it would bring them to economic parity. That would be the Google important Fox, thing. Google Frog's playing a very defense-heavy game, which I really hope he doesn't do this versus Bale. Well, that's what I was about to say. Is like, I, I'm, I'm kind of glad in a sense that there's only eight players in the game because Google Frog versus Bale Thoughts playing their typical styles, that'll take half an hour per game. Yeah, Google Frog plays a very defense-heavy style where you can see that some of the other players would like deliberately try to counter Bale Thoughts by playing the opposite style. But Google Frog does tend to play slightly defense-heavy. Well, defense-heavy leads he, he, can he can play in a lot of... Um, styles so i really hope that um he brings out something um impressive which is not just playing um a style similar to fail Thus and beating him yeah. at it well i think the reason why google frog is going for a defensive style here is because he, google frog knows magman is google frog, i'm sure can tell that magman is getting tunnel vision and that pretty speak that speaks pretty well to magman not really thinking about the big pictures so google frog is thinking most likely thinking hey i can win by macro I can just out macro Magman. I can. I have more patience than Magman. I can just outlast Magman mentally. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna basically take advantage of Magman's lack of patience. Because you can see Magman keeps just rushing in. Because Magman's very concerned about this expansion, but really it's been feeding it so far. And honestly, not much economic disparity at this point. It's getting bigger, but not much at this point. 
But I think Magman just being impatient is being taken advantage of by Google Frog. And that's the big yeah. thing. Yeah. I think that uh, a part of this is the map. I mean, with these hills here, a, a big strategy is to um, take the middle of that and just build the hills down and then just ring, your, ring, the, ring the hills all around with um, defenses They're so that they just can't be broken. Yeah, but the, um, you do see that the Google Frog's going for the same thing. And which Puppy's is, going to the north as well. Puppy's actually trying to harass the north and won't be able to do that so that effectively. The defenders will be able to stop them coming, with no yeah. problem. You can't run puppies into into defenders. Defenders are just one of the strongest things against puppies. No, that's that's very true. Although I'm kind of liking this Faraday here. I mean, Magman. Oh, not quite enough though. Does send out one of the Zeus's, but doesn't manage to send out both of them. And the commander. Oh, that should have been firing far sooner too. Like at this point, yeah. the Faraday being stunned out on top of that, getting distracted by a glaive. That's wasn't a bad idea, but falling behind and Magman about to lose their commander. Is that? That's it. That's the commander down. That's even worse iconic position than they were in before. Google Frog's with way ahead. With Mag slightly better management there, he definitely could have like continued to keep one of the Zeus's stunned, the original Zeus stunned, while he moved the other, his commander in a position to fire. His commander had it fired yeah, earlier. Doesn't matter yeah, about this game. He knows he lost. But yeah, so that was, I think, a matter of patience. Like, Magman just had far less patience than Google Frog did, and Google Frog knew it. So I think fail thoughts in Google Frog probably may not be as defensive because the thing is the first game might be as Google Frog trying to figure out what fail thoughts is up to and Google Frog knows fail thoughts is def defensive style, but probably figures hey you know what I got 200 LO on fail thoughts I can out macro him or out macro them I'll just probably go. But at the same time Google Frog might just be thinking that there's not much point in trying to yeah I might go for the counter style might go for more offensive and decide you know what. I can do macro play if I need to, but let's see if we can finish this quick. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I think Magnum that um. Sense, yeah, I think that um, a, a lot of it is 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 trying to attack into a situation where you're going to lose advantage. Is is one of the major things that you need yeah. to learn. Um, I think in most games, but in zero K in particular, because you live behind reclaim and you you know it's it's so much is it's focused on on constantly fighting and constantly making even trades. And the thing is not just it's even, it. you're focusing on making sure that you don't lose, the, like, not losing units is as important as killing your opponents, possibly more important than killing your opponent's units, because you want to make sure that you keep that critical mass, as you said, but also the reclaim, and there's just the fact that, that the position advantage that you get, the amount of influence you get on the map, the fact that you can then shift those units around, change where they're controlling, if they're dead, you can't do that because they're corpses. All they can do is provide <laughs> metal for whoever's nearest. But if they're alive, they can at least give you some control over the map. They can give you some position. Because if you're too focused on that one section, then your opponent can just expand across the entire map. They have all the units to do so. They have the metal to do so. They can just build the defenses they need in order to keep those alive if you try to attack them recklessly. So it becomes this kind of bit of a tug of war for a little while. You're not quite able to attack outright. You kind of have to just keep alive enough to build up to then attack. I've said before that 0k reminds me of Go and... That's one of those ways in which it does. Ultimately, Go doesn't end with one side being completely annihilated, but other than that, that sort of push and pull gameplay definitely kind of speaks to that.